from Portland, it's the Tom Mikey Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Mikey. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Mikey Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Right down, our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's Thursday and time for another edition of Like Is 101. Can you attend my class? It is for your own good. I mean, a girl decides how far she's going to let you go in the first five minutes. You in my class? I am today. So how long do I wait to call? A day. Tomorrow. Mm -mm. Tomorrow, then a day. Yeah. So two days. Yeah, I guess you could call it that. Two days. Uh, two days is like industry standard. Well, how long are you guys going to wait to call your babies? Six days. How many times did you call her this week? Twice. Twice? You called her twice? Dan, never call abroad more than once a week. Never, ever, ever. It's like it's 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. More importantly... We teach women how men think. I am your professor. This is my classroom. Class is in session. This is where we teach the tenets of Lycus 101. And you know what the basics are. I uh, just review some of these for you. Lycus 101 students uh, believe that dating equals porking. We go on a date to get laid. That's why. Not because we want to try a new restaurant or because we want to get to know you better. We want to see you naked. Ladies, get the idea out of your head that we have any interest in what's inside that little pea brain of yours. We don't. We just want to see you naked. We also believe that um, when we are called jerks or a-holes, we're being complimented. and We take it as such. We wear it as a badge of honor. Yes, yes, I am a jerk. You bet I am. Proud of it. Like as one of one students believe in the three strikes, you're outlaw. If you don't put out the first three dates, we kick your ass out. Move on to the next. We will say anything to get laid, anything at all. By the time you find out the truth, we'll have moved on to the next victim. We do not spend more than $40 on a date. Zero is optimum. We do not date single mothers which can make you a very lonely man here in Portland, but we do not date single mother. We don't do it. She already made one mistake. Why should you pay for the next one? I know I'm not going to. If a chick answers the cell phone on a date, it's the booty call she's meeting after she tells you, oh, look at the time. Oh, 9.30, it's late, I gotta go. Good night! After you've paid for dinner. Then she goes off and has sex with the guy who didn't pay for anything. So when that cell phone rings during a date, you excuse yourself from the table, you get up, and you leave. No questions asked. No explanations necessary. You get up, leave her there, let her pay the bill, drive off into the sunset. When she calls your cell phone, don't answer it. Done. When we go out on a date with a girl and she says, uh, you know, it was a lot of fun at the bar drinking and all that. Now I'm really hungry. Uh, no. Drop her off at a restaurant and leave. Do not take her to Denny's for breakfast or any other restaurant. In Seattle, the 13 coins means you're not getting any. The minute that chick takes you on a detour, and by the way, we love the 13 coins. I mean, the pan-fried oysters at the 13 coins are incredible. Love the food. But uh, the last thing you want to do is you're out boozing. And uh, the chick wants to take you on a detour to get food. That is a filibuster designed to keep you from getting sex. She'll keep you out all night. She'll read the menu for an hour and a half. I don't know what I want. I don't know what I want. Do I want the mahi-mahi? Do I want the tornadoes of veal? What do I want? I don't know. I don't know. It's so good. Yeah, that's good for an hour right there. In fact, I always think of the 13 coins of that huge menu they've got there. And, uh, you know, I've done this. I've been there with chicks at 3 in the morning. Don't don't ever let yourself get into that situation. You're not getting laid that night. That's it. 
If she's got pan-fried oysters on her breath, I'm telling you, she's not going to kiss you with that mouth. Forget it. Not happening. That's how chicks think. Think about it, guys. So when a chick says, I'm hungry, uh, get me something to eat on the way home, no, no. No, you got to step up to the plate and swing a big bat here. You tell her, you know what? I know you're hungry. I'll drop you off at the restaurant. I'm going to go home. i got to get up in the morning anyway. Good night. You are not out there. I, I, that one psycho broad, she used to do it to me all the time. She not only had, I swear, she not only, it was like she was pregnant, although she never was, thank God. Uh, but she always had these cravings for French fries and a vanilla milkshake. And they had to be from Jack in the Box. And like an idiot, because she was really hot, like an idiot, a few times I actually said, oh, okay. I think I know what Jack in the Box is. What it, um, it's like uh, Vine and Sunset. I, there's one right right, right there. It's the Sunset and Vine. We go to Sunset and Vine. There's Jack in the Box. Then you get to the Jack in the Box, right? And, it's, of course, it's late after the bars are closing, so it's like 1.30. And Jack in the Box is the only establishment open for about 15 square miles. And the line for the drive through is snaking out onto Sunset Boulevard. There you are. Talk about a buzz kill. The two of you are boozing, having a good time. And suddenly you're moving one inch an hour on the drive through lane to Jack in the Box. And then she's got uh, vanilla milkshake all over her mouth. And it wasn't vanilla milkshake you wanted all over her mouth. Don't do it. Don't do it. These are some of the basics of Lycus 101. And uh, I also have a letter from a listener that I want to read because I really care about what's happening to this guy. I know I rarely give a rat's ass about any of you out there, and I'm uh, generally pretty upfront about it, but this guy I actually feel some empathy for. Here's the letter. Hello, Tom. Please don't use my name if you broadcast or publish this email. I hate my shrink. He's a sissy. And I'm not going back to him. I really do need a shrink, though. Simple like us 101 on Thursdays isn't enough. I just went through some really difficult times, which I won't get into here. I was a successful PR agency executive by age 25. But now at age 33, I'm at an all-time low. As you might have guessed, getting laid regularly again is my... Number one issue in regaining a life. I'm working, but having a modest amount of money just isn't doing it. My confidence is totally shot, and women sense that immediately. I want to shrink with a take-no-prisoners approach to getting chicks in bed. One with a pragmatic, real-world, Lycus-style philosophy. One who isn't trying to turn me into a sissy. Who falls all over himself to respect women. Ask them what they sincerely want. And other such counterproductive crap. Do you know some 101 friendly shrinks in Los Angeles? Can you help me, Tom? I'm not writing this for kicks. I'm really getting desperate. He goes on to say, thank you. I wish I had you around when I was raised by a psycho bitch single mother. You could have saved me a lot of problems in the things that really matter. He signs it, your son. And, um... I um I, I don't keep a list of that kind of uh, resource for you. But if there are any uh, psychiatrists, psychologists, family therapists, uh, who are like as 101 students who subscribe to the teachings of your professor, and he's in, uh, I believe, the Los Angeles area. Uh, yes, yes, the Los Angeles area. Uh, give us a call here, and uh, Dean will take your phone number, and we will hook you up with this guy. And uh, I understand. By the way, I, I'm, and I'm very open about it. I've, I've been through therapy. I think it's a great thing to do. Uh, it's one of the best things I ever did in my life. The fact that he's going to a shrink, I understand why you go. And it's good. But, yes, when you have one of those touchy-feely shrinks that tells you you're not sensitive enough and, you know, you're not uh, trying to... You're not, you're not sensitive to her feelings. You're not asking her about her feelings. Oh, you know what? Most women just need a good crack in the ass, need you to pin them down and F them hard. That's what they need. They they don't need anything touchy-feely. I'll do a little touchy-feely on you. I'll tell you right now, with the palm of my hand, I'll be touchy-feely. The shrink just says harder and that's it? 
The shrink just says harder, and that's <laughs> that would be a good one-on-one shrink. <laughs> You're not doing her hard enough. Fit her up against the wall if you have to. <laughs> Come on, grab her by the neck. Let's go. So, if there is a shrink who uh, does subscribe, please uh, call us at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom, and we will connect you up with this guy because I, I do feel for him. I understand what he's going through. All right. All right, you know what it is. It's Like Us 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course. We teach men how to get more tail for less money. We teach women how men think toll-free at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. If you are looking to avoid a serious relationship, avoid commitment, avoid marriage, if you are just looking to get laid, you don't want to listen to chicks blabbing on about their boring, uh, meaningless lives that you don't give a rat's ass about. If you don't want to spend money or waste your valuable time on broads who are never going to give it up, I am the man to talk to right now. Now, like it. 1-800-5800. I just think Tom Likes' way of getting laid is ridiculous. No, I, no, I just Tom, totally Tom, agree. Tom knows more about men and women than any other man I've ever heard. It's the Tom Likes Show. Tom Likas show from beautiful Portland, Oregon. At 1-800-5800-TOM, it's Likas 101. And we say hello here to Erica on Likas 101. It's your professor, Erica. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Erica. Hmm. Oh, Tom, I'm so tired of hearing how girls are with guys. I mean, it just, it makes me so angry. (laughs) Basically... Well, okay. When a girl goes out with a guy, they know if they're going to have sex with them. Yeah. I mean, you you wouldn't accept a date with a guy unless you were interested. And I mean truly interested in the guy. So why play the game? Why do the, oh, well, I've only gone out with him two times, so I can't sleep with him because he's not going to respect me. Yeah. or He's hoping you're a slut. (laughs) Well, don't use the word slut. I hate that. I'm not a slut, Tom. I never was a slut. But if I was going to sleep with a guy, I was going to do it. There was nothing that was going to hold me back. I'd want you to be my slut, baby. I'll tell you what. If I were with you, I'd want you to be my slut. I don't want you to be a good girl. I want you to be a slut. I've been married for five years, and let me tell you, I am my husband's slut. Really? He does whatever he wants with me. Is that so? It's so. But, you know, when I was single, it's like, why play the game? Why do it? Right. I mean, you know, what satisfaction are you going to get from that? And it's like, you know, well, tell me. Well, it's also predicated on this false premise that, you know, women believe that if they're holding out on us, that they are the one and only source of sex that we have available to us. Like, we're on a date with you, and so if you don't give it to us, we're going to have to wait until you give it to us. They when do the believe that. Is, well, when the reality is, if I'm out with you, and it's early enough, and it looks like it's going nowhere, I'm going to thank you very much for a nice evening. And then I'm going to get on my cell phone. I'm going to call uh, Bachelorette number 2, uh, <laughs> who I know will give it up. And I will be over at her place pounding her headboard in no time flat. And so uh, it's amazing how women are like, well, you know, I think we should wait. Yeah, well, you can wait if you want to, dear, but uh, I'm not waiting. But what's the whole respect thing? I mean, because you know how um, you've told the guys to use the ATM receipt to put their telephone number on, which is brilliant. Yeah. I mean, it really is brilliant because it's only going to get the type of girl that's interested in money. Yeah, but we're not looking for a relationship. We're looking to get laid. And the kind of woman who's interested in money will have sex with us tonight if she thinks we have money. Oh. So you do think that's going to right away? Right. We see, for, again, like, like many women, and I understand it's just the way women are socialized in our country, you know, you're mixing up having a relationship with having sex. Right. And in reality, when we hand someone an ATM receipt with our phone number on it, we're looking to have sex tonight if possible. Well, there are women that are the, out there looking for sex. Yeah, well, we know that. But the, the point is, if, we're not, if we don't happen to be with one of them or haven't met one, uh, you know, guys need sex all the time. Yeah. You know, women, women can sit there and sit home watching Friends and eating cheesecake, waiting for the next guy to come along, and they're you know, washing their hair, or whatever women do in between. Okay? Guys need it like they need to go to the bathroom, okay? They need okay. it. 
And so the thing is, if we can't get the nine or the ten we're waiting for, there's a six and a half on speed dial. And if we <laughs> arrive at the building late enough at night and uh, they get out before crack of dawn, nobody will see us go in and out. Mm-hmm. I, we, but the thing is, is as I always say, I compare women to uh, to uh, bathrooms, okay? Uh, because women are human toilets, after all. You know, we'd really. Have you ever gone to the bathroom at say like the Ritz Carlton or the Four Seasons? Beautiful, uh-huh. isn't it? Uh-huh. It's great, and you go in there, and sometimes they got an attendant, and you, after you wash your hands, the, the person hands you a towel. Sometimes they spritz a little uh, fragrance on you while you're in there and stuff, and it's just great. And you feel completely pampered, and it's wonderful. And the men's room sometimes they have condoms for sale in case you're uh, going to get lucky tonight or whatever. And they, they just have every service available, and it's wonderful. And if I have to go to the bathroom, there's no place I'd rather go than like a Four Seasons or, uh, you know, the, 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 the Ritz Carlton or one of those. No, really, really no, nice Tom. Hotels. But Tom, what, you want to go to the bathroom at home. No, but no. Well, but the point is, if I'm not home, I still need to go. So here's the deal. Now, all right. So it's late at night, and I'm driving down. You know that road that's like I-15. Late at night, you're heading to Vegas. You are uh, tomorrow. Um, tomorrow, heading to Vegas. All right, all right. But you're some. You know, you're out there somewhere, and um, yeah. you know, it's just darkness, and you can see nothing but stars, and. Suddenly, you have this urge. You need to go to the bathroom. Well, you know what? The Four Seasons is now 100 miles away. Right. So but, you're stuck at the nasty one a, at the 76 there's a, station. There's a greasy 76 station <laughs> where you have to go in, and they've got the, the men's room key, and it's tied to a big brick. And they they say, make sure you bring that back. Like, what am I going to do with your men's room key here in the middle of nowhere? You know, So you take the big brick out there, and you unlock the door, and you realize the lock is broken. You could just push the door open. And when you get inside, the place hasn't been cleaned in a while and it smells but you know what you know it, it, it still works you go they use the toilet it, it, you flush it and you feel relief and then you leave so you see oh. even though i would prefer to go to the four seasons or the ritz carlton every once in a while you do go behind a bush or you go to the 76 station but don't you want and, a nice wife at home because <laughs> there's what, nothing that beats it there's here. nothing that's better Dear, there are the point is the guys who have nice wives are very very lucky men, but but in reality a lot of wives are just cranky bitches. Once they've got our ATM card, all they want is to is to beat the crap out of us and make us miserable, to nag us and harass us and taunt us, and they and they can do it because they know they can take half of everything we have if we object. I know, I know, and that's sad but true. But, Tom, don't compare well, us to toilets. I'll back to the 76 station sometimes. You know, I, I, I go out there, and I just feel complete relief, and then I can leave, you know. I you know, pay at the pump and go. Yeah, but don't call me a toilet, Tom. I'm not a toilet. Come on. Come on. Uh, all right, a sperm receptacle. Get something better. <sighs> sperm receptacle? No. Pick one. No. <laughs> I won't. I refuse to. <laughs> <laughs> You'd love me, Tom. I am the perfect woman for you. Really? Oh, well, I, you know, I mean, you know. By the way, husband, I've been with, I, I have been, I, like every man, I've been with women where, like, you know that thing they've got on the wall where you have to ter- tear down, like, a big round ring of paper, like a big round paper towel to put on the toilet seat? Uh-huh. Yeah. I've been with women like that, right, to put one of those down. <laughs> Never with me. <laughs> really? Okay. Well, that's uh, nice to know. I'll keep that in mind. It's the Tom Likas Show. This is the Tom Likas Show. From Portland, Oregon at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Likas 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail or less money. We also teach women how men think. Toll free at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's one 800 500 8 Six six. If you have a question for your professor, if you have a complaint about anything your professor has taught on the air, many of you write in and don't actually call in with your complaint. I'd love to have it out with you right now. So dial us right now, one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. We are here in Portland because uh, tomorrow we're making our first live appearance since October of nineteen ninety nine at Barracuda. 9 Northwest 2nd Avenue in downtown Portland. Now, a number of people here in Portland have already won tickets to come see us. But today, the radio station announced they're not going to require women to have a ticket. You can show up. And we're encouraging you to do that, ladies. Now, if you're a 9 or a 10, we'll backdoor you. 
Just send us a picture to Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. We'll, we'll backdoor you into the event. You can hang out in the VIP area, away from all those groping hands and all that, and get treated with the respect you deserve as a hot chick. If you're not as hot or uh, you're too lazy or your boyfriend hasn't taught you how to use email yet, uh, you can simply show up tomorrow, and we recommend you get there early. The doors open at 2 o'clock if we're done with our sound check. Who knows? They might open at 2.05 or 2.25. I don't know. Get there early. Bring an umbrella. It's the bottom line. Who knows what's going to happen? I have no idea. They tell me. They they tell me. Let's do a little preview here. They tell me there's going to be a hot tub on stage. A hot tub. A hot tub on stage. Okay. Wow. Ah. Anyway, uh, that's tomorrow at Barracuda Nine Northwest Second Avenue, downtown Portland. Uh, all right, here we are. Like us 101, toll free at 1 800 5800. Tom, it's 1 800 5800 It's Todd on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing? All right, Todd. Well, as you know, Portland is a town where a virgin is any girl with two kids or less. So, um. <laughs> I hadn't heard that one. I like it. Yeah, well, that that, that fits us here, you know. So uh, um, it's it's desperation for a 29-year-old to find women to date that don't have kids, as you know. Um, I have a situation where a friend of mine and his wife are not doing well. They haven't for a while. I've known them for about 10 years. And uh, I don't know if it's true everywhere, but here women are, are single for about 30 minutes. You know, if they split up, they got a new boyfriend the next day. She's already hunting around. Because I need somebody to pay the rent for the kids and everything. Well, yeah, in this case, this is a, this is a, uh, uh, this will be a soon, soon to be single woman with no kids. Um, uh, it's not an issue of me dating my buddy's wife because he and I barely talk. He's had nothing to do with her for a couple of years. The problem is I want to see her. I want to hit it, but I don't want to be the new boyfriend and I want to avoid that. So what well, is, what first is of all, are you, are you, are you the friend? I, I am the friend. Well, I've known them, you know, I'm obviously I'm not going to sleep with my buddy's wife when they were a couple. But I've been sort of the platonic friend. We go out and do things because he won't do anything. And I see, I got to get out of the platonic friend thing. She's obviously that's, she's that's hot for me to be her boyfriend. She's told you this? Well, no, it's obvious though. How is it obvious? Well, um, um, body. Okay, last night we, we went to David Bowie a couple of nights ago here in Portland. On the way home, I I hug her much bigger hug in the in the front driveway than I normally get. And, oh, and then she moved. She she bought her new house. It's awfully close to mine. I, that, that doesn't tell you anything. Well, it, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm nervous. And in fact, it's more likely to tell you she wants to move in with you than it is to tell you that she wants to have sex with you and uh, no strings attached. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. So, See, so, how, so, very, so Tom, what even, advice would you give me to avoid pitfalls? Uh, don't be too available. Uh, don't be talking to her all the time. Uh, did you pay for those concert tickets the other day? I did. And you see, that's what friends do. But, you know, you know, if you're trying to nail something, you don't spend that kind of money. Oh, that's a good point. You don't spend that kind of money. Yeah. And by the way, you're also here. You are. You're encouraging something. You're trying to discourage. You want her to not become needy and make you the boyfriend and have you end up paying for everything. And then you go out and pay for her concert tickets. How much were two tickets to see David Bowie? Where was it? The Rose Garden? It sure was at the How theater much in the club. Was that? Uh, the cheap that? ones were like forty-eight fifty or so. So I'm eight fifty over your limit. Uh, no, no, that, that was that was for one ticket. Yeah. It was a ni- ni- yes, uh, forty-eight fifty times two is ninety-seven dollars. And you had, did you say you had dinner there at the Rose Garden? Uh, we had dinner there. How much was that? Uh, Twenty-five, something like that. For over a hundred dollars. You spent over a hundred dollars on someone you've never had sex with. Yeah, you got me. You see? And so you're encouraging her to think of you, if nothing else. Uh, the friend who could be the next husband. Yeah. But but not not uh, not a sexual partner, not a the, the booty call. Yeah. You're not treating her like a booty call. Booty calls you never take out of the house. That's that's the that's the golden rule. Yeah, you're right. Preferably you don't see them by the light of day. <laughs> that's a booty call. Yeah, you're right. The, the minute you've seen the, 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 the woman's skin in sunlight, it, it's over. You, you've, you've crossed the threshold. Yeah. The minute, the minute you've eaten a meal with a woman, you've, you've crossed the threshold. Yeah, Booty you're calls right. are literally calls. Usually, you're drunk. No one else is picking up the phone. So you're calling the booty call. And you show up there, and it's like pay at the pump, and then you uh, take the receipt and go. You don't stand around and 
hug in the driveway. Forget it. You're you kidding? The two of you are never in the driveway at the same time. She got home from work about 6, and you showed up about midnight. You're never in the driveway at the same time. When you're in the driveway, she's in bed. <laughs> Sound advice. See, this is why I called you, Tom. This is what I need to know. Yes. See, this is great. Well, I always appreciate uh, all the comments you have for me, whether I talk to you or I hear it on the air. And I don't know if you know, but Portland is like, and, and the Pacific Northwest is, is uh, skunk bud city. We get the best bud up here. So I would appreciate if you could take me out with the longest bong rip you have, followed by a THX sound effect, because that's what it does to us up here. Uh, or a THC sound effect. Here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. What would you say to a man that did have a female friend? I'd say you're a pussy. The Tom Likas Show. I the Tom Likas Show at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom from Portland. It's Like Us 101. I am your professor at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's Jessica on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi there. Hi. How are you? Do you care, darling? Not really, but I'm not here to start a fight. I, uh, like I told the other guy, I'm sorry I didn't catch his name, I am unavailable to come tomorrow because of my age, but I know that my boyfriend will be there. And honestly, I he had always talked about you, and I always thought maybe you were like a sports announcer or something because he likes that stuff. And I decided to look you up today, and I have to say I'm appalled. Why? Well, why do you why do you do this? Why do you why do I do what? Toilets and come on! I mean, I'm not like I said. I'm not going to start a fight, and I'm not going to say that women are. I'm telling you, that's how men think. Not all men. No one said all. Did you hear the word "all" here? Okay, no, I. Okay, I'm that sorry. is gener- That is generally how men that? think. Huh? Why do you Why do you think that way? I, 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 I'm telling you, men generally way. do. That men okay. generally do, huh? Wait, but I'm asking you, why do you think this way? This is well, this, this is disgusting to me. Well, it may be disgusting to you because if a man ever told you he thought that way about you, you wouldn't give him what he wants. I would leave him exactly because well, that's why he won't. That's, that's why he won't tell me. you. But you see, since I'm not dating you, I can tell you the truth. Okay. But but you don't even know me, so why, I don't have to know why you. should you be able to say that? That's what do you mean, why? Because it's true. Yeah, I'm able no, to say it because true. it's true. What do you mean it's not no, true? I'm not true. I'm not just, just there for my boyfriend's sexual pleasure. Yes, I enjoy having sex with him, and you know what? Sometimes I'm just as sexual as him, and I want it just as much Great. as him. I'm not going to deny that, but you know what? I'm a 20-year-old college student who's trying to get ahead in this world, yeah, and so what? Uh, people like you, I can't do that. Oh, it's my fault. The is this, well, Tom, you're sitting here on national radio. People listen to you. Oh, dear. You know what? The fact is, you speak for yourself. Whatever you accomplish on your own, you accomplish. Any woman who wants to accomplish something does. Oprah Winfrey makes $120 million a year. She earned it. Okay? Anything you want to do, you can do. Most women don't want to accomplish anything. They just want to have a man pay for everything and take responsibility for everything and take the blame for everything and nag us for everything and harass us all the time. That's mostly what women want to do with us. And so the fact that... Maybe because... Women have been so depressed for so long. We don't care what the reason is. That's just, dear, I don't care what the reason is. It's irrelevant. I don't care. Men made it's us just the way, way it is. You guys gave us the approval to ask for the credit card. You, you gave us about? that approval. I, I, and I'm here to tell guys, don't do that. Don't give women credit cards. Don't give them money. Don't spend money on women. Use women for what they but were intended as human toilets. We're just... Uh, why? Oh, okay. Why are we intended with just human toilets? Why are we intended just to give you because because dear? Why do you think a guy goes on a date? Why do you think a girl goes on a date? 
Uh, a girl goes on a date to see how many free drinks and meals no. she can get out of a guy, no. to try to see how long she can stall him off from having sex, to sit there and blab about herself, thinking we want to hear all those things about you, your boss, your kitty cat, the problems you have with your family, your ex-boyfriend and what a jerk he was, and all the other little things women love to talk about on a date. We don't want to hear a word of it. You know what? If, if you sat down at a restaurant with a man, and you said to him, you know what, I'm not hungry. Let's go back to your place and have sex. Mm -hmm. How many men do you think would say no? I don't know. I, you know, I think uh, what I've percentage? never been a woman like that. I'm asking you what percentage do you think would say no? Um, probably half, maybe. Oh, not even. Dear, please. Well, don't be naive. It's good to show something for men, Tom. I mean, come on. But I'm just telling the truth. That's how men are. Do you understand I that? Don't think that, that? That you're right, though. I don't think that that is how men think. I know you don't men think that. More sexual pleasure than women. I mean, there's, you know, there's different hormones in their body that. Well, whatever the reason, that that's what we want, and that's why we want you, and that's why we listen to you. Ever see a guy and say, "Why is he with that bitch? Why is he with that jerk? Why is he? Why do men put up with nagging and harassing and screaming and crying and stamping your little feet because we want to get laid?" I don't think that's true because there's a lot of guys out there who their girlfriends, you know, for some reason they can't, it hurts to have sex or they're not good at giving, you know, oral pleasure or whatever. And they still stay with them. There's this what? thing called companionship. Tom, dear, maybe you don't dear, know. Maybe, dear, we're you talking know, about two different things. You're talking about having a boyfriend. We are talking okay. about guys who are getting laid. And this is what guys want. Now, that doesn't mean that eventually, after having sex with you, they won't actually start listening to what you say. Some of them do. Sometimes they like you. Sometimes they listen. Sometimes they might even return a call. But first and foremost, when we meet you, we want to nail you. That's it. I don't think so. I know you don't think so, dear. But, but I'm not. No, am I a man? That want that, and there's only certain women who dear, are going to do that. The, 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 the men who want that are are straight men. To be the men who want women. that are straight men. The men who want it are straight men. It's mm -hmm. your gay friends and the men who don't know how to close the deal who don't want it. And what are they that don't know how to close the door? The, the deal. What, what do you call them? Pussies. Well, <laughs> that's pretty. That's in dumb of you. I just, it makes me sick that you do this. What and am I doing? I'm a, I, I'm a fan. You are totally putting down women. That is so wrong. Please, I'm just telling the truth about women and how men feel about women. Well, I don't think you know how men feel then. I think you know oh, how dear, you dear. feel. Oh, dear, dear. Dear, if I don't know how men feel, why do we have such a high listenership? Why are so many men tuning in? Why do men keep writing us letters thanking me for ta men talking about so funny. this? Because men what? Men think you're funny. Oh, men are t no. Men tell me. Men have gotten advice from me. Dear, dear. Men have gotten advice. Will you shut up for a minute, please? Men have no. written into this program. Oh, no. I put you on hold. No, you'll shut up when I tell you to. I'll put you on hold. Uh, what men have actually written in here and thanked me, thanked me uh, for my advice. Told me I've saved their lives. And we've had hundreds of men like that. So, dear, you live there in your own little dream world with your boyfriend. By the way, I bet your boyfriend has had a lot of the same thoughts. You know what I'm saying? Because he listens to the show. He does. Yeah, well, and maybe that should tell you something about him. And how he feels well, about you. Well, you know what? Maybe we'll have to talk about that. I didn't know what the show was all about. Well, now you know. And now maybe, know, maybe you have a better idea. Maybe. It. Maybe now you have a better idea of what your boyfriend sees in you. You know, you know after two and, half, two and a half years, I don't think that's what he sees in me. Because that's not what I'm good for. Well, uh, dear, uh, obviously that's what he thinks. No, he doesn't think that. Oh, why does he listen well, to the show? I don't show? go for his credit card. I don't, I don't ask him to take the blame for everything. But, you know what? His first interest in you when he met you was, was nailing you, seeing you naked. That was his first interest. How do, you, how do you know what I look like? I, uh, I'm just telling you, if he's your boyfriend, that was his first interest when he met you. Whatever you look like. No. Obviously, you're, uh, you're his taste. No. When we first met, we were working in the, the worst conditions ever, and we looked doesn't like mean he wasn't. It doesn't mean he wasn't imagining you naked. 
Well, if he was, I feel pretty bad for him because I looked horrible. That's for well, sure. Well, maybe he has low self-esteem. Maybe uh, he does, yeah, at, at your young age and probably his young age, maybe he can't afford better than you at this point. Uh, well, I guess. I mean, hey, if that's what, your theory. What is, he, is he studying? Is he going to school? What is he uh, studying to become? He is. He doesn't know what he's studying to become. He is a business major and psychology major, but he doesn't know if that's what he wants to uh, do. That's my point. One day when he makes more money, he'll be able to do better than you, and then he'll move on. Well... I, I, honestly, the, the bottom line that I have. And to I, by the way, his tr- his trophy doing... wife his trophy wife is in the seventh grade right now. What do you think about that? Well, I didn't hear what you said. His trophy wife is in the seventh grade right now. Tom Likas. Come on. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. It's John on a cell phone. Hello, Hello John. No, you're John. Wait, 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 wait. wait. You, I know you're messed up. You're John. I'm Tom. I'm sorry. My mind's crazy. I know. The Tom Likas Show. Hey, send us an email. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. Tom at blowmeuptom.com. We're in Portland at the studios of Max 910. Talk radio for guys. More of your telephone calls coming up on Likus 101 at 1-800-5800-TOM. The Tom Likus Show.